So recently I've been I've been really getting into um, people just playing Dead Rising. Follow this one guy. Uh, his name is uh, Berlizzi. Uh, actually, uh, Akil and Jay showed me him. He's like a pretty funny guy. And he it's his first time playing Dead Rising. It, it's pretty good. He's got like a, like an eight-part series. They're all like an hour, 30 minutes, like close to two hours. His first playthrough of the game ever. He just He's just eating so much ass, bro. It's just hilarious, but also frustrating at the same time. <laughs> I remember, I think when that game came out, we were like maybe freshmen or sophomores. I can't really say for sure. It's been a while for sure. And I, like I said, man, it was, it was funny in the sense that it's just like, this is such an old game. Like, how could you not know how to play this game by now? You know, but I can understand at the same time, he was not wanting to like, look it up to kind of teach himself how to play. And the game does not really teach you a lot. Let me tell you. That's an unforgiving game to like, not do an objective with. It sucks because like, there's a lot of the objectives are on, well, all of them are on a timer. I don't know if he was trying to get like 100% on everything, but you got to be on point to do that. Uh, yeah, I think he just uploaded his finale for the playthrough. Because I don't know if you remember Dead Rising, the first Dead Rising, but like there are different endings depending yeah. on what objectives you complete. Object, I think ending A is how you get overtime. So you have to um, do the story, uh, save a certain amount of people, be at a certain place, and I think have a certain, be at a certain level. So I think there are just like a couple different requirements. I'm pretty sure that's not all of them are actually requirements but i think it's just like do the story and have saved a certain amount of people right uh, and then you get overtime i don't think that he did that <laughs> especially with the way that he started the playthrough he was just like killing all of his survivors basically i don't know if you remember like you had to go in through the roof for a lot of the time when you go in through the roof there's like a ledge before you get into like the the ventilation and he got two survivors like up to the roof but he didn't get them up up over the ledge to like get him close enough for him to like bring him back with him to the security room so like i I basically for like an hour and a half i watched him put in all this work trying to get these people to come back to survive and like do all of that and then he didn't do it so they just like (laughs) died outside while he was in the security room and he's like what the fuck that's the most frustrating thing because you know where he fucked up every time he ends the video he's just like bro every time i play this game i'm two i'm two steps back from where i fucking started (laughs) so fucking it really, really made me want to play it myself, dude, honestly. I don't even have the first Dead Rising. I only have um, uh, Dead Rising 2. I think I had it on Xbox. I had uh, Dead Rising, Dead Rising 2. I didn't really anticipate that there was going to be, like, I guess somebody playing something so badly it would make me want to replay something. <laughs> but yeah, here we are, man. Like, today is the day. Do start your LP now. Screw it. Let's go. Hit that oh, yeah, YouTube dude. channel and then just upload your long let's plays. I've only I've only gotten like twelve views, but still it's like it's an archive of one of a reminder of how fucking cool and frustrating Dark Souls two was. I remember starting out I was playing Bio- I was watching some guy play Bioshock for the first time and that made me want to play Bioshock. And that was like uh, a, a long time ago. Um I think it was before Infinite. And uh I don't know, na- nowadays the only LPs I watch is just like Markiplier. I think that's it. Uh, any other LP I watch is just like a streamer playing it, but that's just here and there. I don't. I'm not really too interested in like going into the into the vods. I know they're there, and I could probably watch somebody online play. They're, my algorithm's been showing me a lot of people I never know, I never heard of before, and they're just uh, uploading their late LPs, and that's pretty cool. I I, I like that. Um, the fact that it's showing up on my algorithm means that if I upload another LP, it's probably gonna. I don't know hit somebody else then again these guys actually put in work on their uh on their videos and they actually make like a thumbnail and stuff still like if it's if it's just to archive your shit dude just youtube man is there a game you want to like help like play as like a lp maybe when i started uploading my lps i started i did it because like i liked watching lps at the time you know i just just thought like dark souls 2 is is such a fucking game that you kind of don't want to play it so I'll, I'll be that person for you, you know? Put in the fucking pain and effort just to show you, like, uh, what you what you don't want to play, I guess. But that, that goes for any other game, too. That that was my whole mentality of trying to start an LP. But, like, I guess, like, it's not too late to, like, keep going at it again. But I just got to figure out what to play. As much as I like Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid Five is not replayable. I'm sorry. But I've, I've, there are some Twitch channels that are specifically solely dedicated to Metal Gear Solid games. <laughs> And those guys are troopers, but 
I'm good. That's that is a lot of uh, dedication. I've always wanted to be, I guess, but I've never really been the kind of person to just solely dedicate myself to just one game and one game alone. You know? Yeah, because like you, you start to hate it. Like that's what I said. Like Metal Gear fans don't like anything because like I think it's because like the, the only people I'm listening to talk about Metal Gear are the ones who played it like fucking up to two hundred. 400 times big boss level like the fact that they, they they know where each and every glitch is and like all the backstory of kojima of konami studios and kojima they know the that. lore they know everything and with that like they, they get they become cynical <laughs> say anything you like about metal gear it's gonna be like well this is what's wrong with that and why you're wrong i'm like i, I you know what you're right too but like you're like i get it bro you're just I, tired I, I, you know what that's what it is i'm I, like i'm tired of the game too i'm tired of hearing about like the drama between everything like this is like we said last time beating a dead horse these are these are the true fans these guys know what's up it, it's it's nice to see them you know it's nice to hear like everything i don't know and kind of put it in perspective like this is what i was talking about when saying like you got to find the streamers that you for me don't like sugarcoat the bullshit like if the game sucks they're gonna tell you it sucks but they're gonna keep playing it to show you why it sucks metal gear was cool but like there are different perspectives those perspectives also are perfectly valid as for people who played uh, so many hours of Metal Gear. Yet, I don't see them fucking play Rising. God, why didn't that game get a remaster, honestly? I know that they brought it to Steam, but like that game that game deserves more, honestly. That was my weekly Metal Gear rant. I haven't watched Game Grumps in a hot minute, man. Dude, Game Grumps has gotten really good. My preference is it's never really gotten old. Yeah, that's that's good to hear. That's really good to hear. Like I, I know that they found the money glitch that PewDiePie's doing, and they're just they're replaying... Uh, Game Grumps less plays on I think Twitch. They got subs from that while they're actually making the stuff. Like I could be also be talking out of my ass. I haven't looked at look for them on Twitch, but I I think I've seen some. They're also doing you know like a couple of different uh, kind of content. Like I'm not sure if you've kept up with them in a long time, but they've done they started doing uh, videos on a different channel called uh, the Grumps, and basically they do something called the 10 minute power hour. These videos are just basically Aaron and Dan just sitting down, like, doing random shit, like, oh, trying, yeah. like, a toy, food, a or something like that. Those are the actual gold mines. Like, having Aaron just... There are so many memeable moments where you can just see Aaron just doing something so spectacularly insane. You're just like, there's no fucking way, bro. You're just goddamn crazy. That's good to hear they're still grumping it up over there. Uh, I don't know why I fell off. It's like... No, you know what? I know what it is. It's 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 fan base. That's what kind of throws me off. When I try to find other people that are, like, into it with me. I've only found one other person that were into the Game Grumps and Markiplier. And uh, she was pretty cool. But, like, we haven't kept in touch. Like, I gotta... This is my reminder to fucking check on your rear friends. Besides her, like, everybody else is, like, fucking just insufferable. Maybe it's just my cynical being coming out, but I just can't... I don't like fan bases, man. Like, I'll be a fan of the person, but just... I realize being a fan puts me already in a fan base, but don't let me in with everybody else, please. In that way, once you consider yourself a fan of something, you become biased, you know? It's hard for you to say... It's hard for you to be unbiased. Metal Gear. When it comes... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, when it comes... Good. When it just comes to... When it just comes to that kind of stuff, you know, it's... It's definitely something that you need to, like, clear and conscious about when you're like, Hey, if I enjoy this so much, my point of view is probably going to be a little skewed. My feelings towards this are probably going to be a little skewed, you know, like basically to the point I'm obsessed with this. You know what I mean? And there are there are kind of a bunch of different examples that we can use where that's not always the case. You're not like obsessed with it fanatically, you know, you might be obsessed with it like addictively instead. Like a good example is we got a friend like again, talking about like the one game that you play, like basically the only game that you play. We got a friend that only plays Destiny, like his only game is destiny i'm telling you like these this man has put in at least over three thousand hours into destiny one of the good things about destiny is it's a very very unique unique kind of game because it plays like borderlands except it's not cartoonish you know it's a it's an online service game that plays ba pretty much like borderlands do your do your objectives do just about anything right you get rewarded for it instantaneously instant gratification right yeah, you can grind for guns, grind for the rules. That was like the heart and soul of Destiny One. Now the shitty thing about that is, again, there are not really a lot of games like Destiny. And the difference between Destiny and Borderlands is Borderlands is not like an online service game. They've 
constantly and will continuously bring new content to Destiny as they've done over the last 10 decades just for Destiny 2 alone. Right? Not really Destiny 2, but Destiny in its whole. Yeah. Because I think Destiny 2 came out in like 2017, 2016. So we're almost at the 10 year mark for Destiny 2, but I think Destiny in itself came out like 2000. Uh, I want to say it was like 2014. So yeah, 2014. So we're already at the 10 year mark coming in September for just the Destiny series as a whole. You know, 10 years from beginning to end because I don't really know if anybody cares. But Destiny is now at the end of its plot. I can't really say it's ending, to be fair, because, again, it's an online service game. So basically what they're doing is they're ending the main story and then immediately starting the aftermath or consequences, as they call it. Um, they're going to release it in, like, episodical releases. So, like, it'll be episode one, two, and three. I'm not trying to pitch anything to you, but, like, the season pass, you know, always has all that stuff. So if that's worth it to you, then you can grab it up. But it's really hard for him or anyone to find a game that replaces Destiny because no other game really offers that. Um, there are a couple of games that are coming out that are kind of similar to something like that. Uh, there were a couple of Tom Clancy games that came out that were also MMO service games. They're coming out with a new game, not the Tom Clancy guys, but something just like it. Like it's, I think it's called like First Descendants or something like that. So like we'll see. I don't know if if like like Rainbow Six. No, not like Rainbow Six. I don't know if you played any of those games. I don't really remember what they're called, but like it's basically like open world and oh, like the Division. Yeah, exactly. Like Division. There it is. Oh, okay. Thank you. I couldn't. I could not think of what series it was called. That's pretty honestly. cool. Um, since we're talking about Tom Clancy, really quick, I'm gonna yeah. just I'm gonna just put this out there. I could give a flying fuck about any series that isn't that isn't Splinter Cell. <laughs> just to be honest with you, Splinter Cell to me is my Metal Gear franchise. No, no, no cap. Like one yeah, that, million percent. That's a lot. I fucking say. love Splinter Cell. Splinter Cell was so good. If I could recommend you to play Double Agent, you would love that game. That's my favorite Splinter Cell game. That that game was just so nuanced in its time. But they don't they don't think about that kind of shit. You know, they're just like, all right, let's just let's just think about making more money. Yeah. You know, so they won't bring that kind of shit back, which is sad. So Rainbow Six and online services where it's at right now. Yeah, I, I miss my single players. I know there's a campaign and all, but like Call of Duty isn't really the campaign is overshadowed by the multi- online multiplayer. Yeah, it, it wouldn't really surprise you. I had the game when it when it came out in November, and I have not once played the campaign. I literally just bought the game for multiplayer. You know, at this point, it's like I don't think that they'll make any more Call of Duties with the story after this one. I think that the only reason why they had to do it was because it's. You know, like, canonically, the next one after Modern Warfare 2, which is a game that's, like, fucking, you know, seven years old. Uh, no, not seven years old. Way older than uh, Destiny. It's an old game. You know what I mean? Yeah, but in this in this time of rem- remasters, like, this, this would be the perfect time. There are, there are so many games. I think we might have talked about this before, but speaking about remasters, what, where, the, where the hell is a remake for Final Fantasy VI? The real, like, what kind of Final Fantasy has really ruined... Nah, and I want to say ruined, like, canonically in the world of Final Fantasy. Like, which villain actually ruined the world? It's Kefka's. I really want to see it. Was... Not pixelated, but I want to, like... Yeah, I want to oh see how God. they do it. Oh, that'd be fucking sweet, man. That would be so fucking sick, dude. Like Kefka just... needs, needs his remaster, like, for sure. Do you want to talk about Joker, dude? Kefka is, like, super Joker. <laughs> if they had reversed 6 and 7... I, I swear people would love Kefka more than they would like Sephiroth. With just how crazy and cynical he is. If they gave if they gave Final Fantasy VI, Final Fantasy VII cutscenes for what it was at the time, I, I just I just imagine it would have really came out a lot different. But yeah, I, I hope that they do something like that, man. Because it, it would be nice to see uh, the kind of motif that they're going in. for At least for what I saw for Final Fantasy XV, Final Fantasy XVI, you know, things like 13 and 12 you know we we have like the singular hero or heroes i guess because 12 you play as more than one person yeah you know they have like the the kind of like revenge motif of wanting to do this or basically get revenge for either x person that was killed or is missing or whoever the case is and i think that that's fine 
I, I also think that the ideas that they had back for most of the other characters in the older Final Fantasies and the previous entries, those character stories are really good too. Like, I, I really like Terra's story. You know, just some amnesiac girl who is zero idea who she is, where she's from, you know, what she's doing there. You know, all of a sudden it just starts you in a game. She's being carried off by soldiers, doesn't know what's going on. You know, gets rescued by some guy. He's just like, oh, this is a cute girl, whatever. It's, you know, fucking 30, 40 hours later into the game and you're just like, oh, you were the main character? Turns out you're like some manufactured esper. Literally, like, you're, you're OP. Yeah, I, I just think that that's cool. No, the, there's there's a lot of uh, good good stuff in in six and in five. I would like five and six both remaster. You might as well get them all. Uh, honestly, you can skip one. That's like where everything starts. That's fine to skip, in my opinion. I think Strangers in Paradise does a good job with that. Really, it's not technically about Final Fantasy one. Okay, yeah, so it's that's like it's supposed to be before Final Fantasy one because it's supposed to be about Garland. Okay. To me, I was like, you can make this canon, and I would probably eat it up. Like at this point, I don't really care. I'm gonna take your guys' word for it and say like, Stranger Paradise was a good one for one. You might as well just get one for two. Then get, get Furion in the in the mix for the next remaster if there's gonna be one. Like, there's a lot of uh, potential in in fucking in the Final Fantasy series right now, especially since like you got the story already. And I'm sure Creative Liberties, modern Creative Liberties, can tw- can twist it around a little bit. But give, don't just give it to Seven. Like give each one that that type of that type of love. You know, like I exactly. I understand Seven, but like man, we got Bart's over here. We just give give a good maturing story about the Onion Knights, dude. Like anything before Six, like give Squall his fucking. I mean, come on, man. Like a Gunblade, dude. The military industrial complex, again. <laughs> I literally cannot tell you how relevant 8 would be right now. I really, really don't want to get into it. But with the whole fucking, you know, the whole fucking conflict in the Middle East right now, on top of basically, yeah, paramilitary organizations, which is basically what Final Fantasy 8 is about. It's about seed, a a paramilitary organization that's set and created to fight and defend against witches. The story's already there, man. I'm telling like... It's it'd be a crime not like not to give everybody everybody else the Final Fantasy VII treatment, you know? Like there's a there's a lot of good shit in there, man. Like I keep saying this, and fuck you, I haven't played it. Fucking seven is overrated, man. Like I see so much of that. It's seven, right? The one with Cloud. I don't want to shit on myself. Yeah, that's dude. The there, one. There's so much, bro. Like there's so much content about seven. I'm like, that's cool, man. Just there's other people. There's other main characters, man. I think Dissidia made me fall in love with every every Final Fantasy game. I honestly I would say that the least favorite ones that I that I liked at the time was probably thirteen. And then after playing Dissidia I was like, Okay, I would want to try this. Yeah. I don't think that I would play play all all three parts of thirteen, but I would probably play like part one and like a, and watch an LP of like part three or something like that. Yeah, the city was so good. It it kinda sucks that Koei Tecmo and I think Team Ninja worked on uh the city and t but they kind of went like the party service route you know like just oh, rotating yeah. characters and you know having three on threes and i was like i don't i don't like that i don't like to see either yeah took away from what we really like i feel like if they i'm not even asking them to read to redo nt if they really wanted to they could just bring back duodecim oh definitely kind of remake it so that it's an online service instead of a ad hoc service and then from there dude like i would i would be set dude like with just those characters if you want to add more characters and stuff like that i remember like you can play as genji oh <sighs> yeah such a cool man. Character. all of these other f- ah, man there were so many good characters on the roster yeah they added um they added chaos too you could play as like the feral version of chaos not the regular version but like you have to fucking beat him first yeah see there's so much potential in in duodecim like i remember me and adam were like we're gonna post on twitter like bring duodecim to the consoles or some shit like that i forgot what it was it was something stupid with something smart like that danny posted this uh from the indian ocean it's weird how he gets wi-fi out there marvel rivals is coming out we just got the trailer for it and you equated it to a moba you said right definitely it looks like it yeah it it just reminds me of like marvel smite i can't say league because league is like more like over the head but i mean league is also a moba in a, in its own right yeah for sure i think i think all all the same though it'll it'll probably be a fun game i, I think a lot of people are going to be looking forward to it especially you know like 
I'm a big fan of the X Men, so I saw you know like Storms in it. You know, like they're just probably gonna come out with a lot more X Men characters. Oh yeah, you think they'll they'll add more? Oh yeah, it's it's gonna be like an online service game, and like I said, if I'm right and it is more like a MOBA than anything, then it's gonna have seasons involved, battle passes, okay. all that good stuff. And you know, like the best part about this, the those kind of games is the cosmetics. You know, so they come out with costumes every season and stuff like that. I'm I'm not gonna say like I'm that type of person that'll always throw my wallet at every game that offers me like just the best cosmetics. Otherwise, like I would still be playing Destiny and I would be I would be in debt. I laugh because it's really it's really close there for me. In the grand scheme, for cosmetics for Marvel Rivals, that would probably be like an enthusiastic kind of kind of purchase for me. Like looking at like older costumes from like certain series. Like again, because X Men is my favorite series from Marvel. So like, if they include X Men characters, which of course they would, I hope. You know, like seventies seventies Wolverine. You know, where he has like his blue or red with the yellow. If we're doing, like, X-Men Evolution, I don't know if you remember what Rogue looked like in X-Men Evolution, and she would wear, like, like a goth skirt with some black boots. Oh, I remember. So, yeah, like, costumes like that, that would be sick. I'm sure, like, Deadpool's gonna be in there. Deadpool's gonna have so many fucking costumes. Nah, that's not really the conversation for that. De- <laughs> Deadpool's really cool. I'm looking forward to Deadpool. I haven't seen Deadpool 2, but uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to 3 when it gets closer to coming out. There's the the main bad guy. Uh, Galactamami. Is that the main bad guy? No way. I, she looks like a bad guy. Yeah, I don't looking, she fucking... Look, all this Chaos Emerald having... Galactamami just collecting it all, you know? Just curious. Our friend, Danny, as Jerry mentioned, over in the Indian Ocean. Uh, he will be back eventually, and we will make sure that he tells you all about his time. I fucking fell in love with that Stranding. Man, it's definitely what I thought it would be. And I'm here for it. I don't know, man. I don't have words right now because, like, I love it. I know other people probably don't like don't like it because, like, it's a lot of back and forth. But right now, I just love it. The inventory management is is great. I didn't realize I was a fan of inventory management until this game. Metal Gear Solid Five had a little bit with like the the soldiers. I, I can kind of see a little bit where some aspects of Kojima from Metal Gear Five bled into this game. Management micromanaging is a big is a big part. I just can't wait to see what it's gonna be like with uh with this new installment. There's a lot of Kojima ass shit happening in this game, dude. It's it's ridiculous. Like I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell you there was a character named Mama, right? Apparently she was a twin. Apparently twins have like uh telekinesis with each other, so they they can kind of feel each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, long story short, they fused with each other. Like physically. Physically, yeah. One person died, and then uh they just started talking to each other. Like one's hanging around her but they're like we are mama it's like <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's exactly i'm like oh my fucking god i had to get up and like walk around for real fucking quick. symbiotes <laughs> god damn it kojima you got me dude we are mama oh lord <laughs> That would make me piss myself. I'm not even gonna lie to you, uh, uh, dude. I had to put my I put my That's... head in my hands, and I'm like, God, this is so. Oh man, this is this is a good kind of cringe. I'm fucking here for it, man. I'm so ready, dude. I'm so glad I downloaded that shit already. I need it on the beach, like just as good as this, man. And just by the trailers, oh my god, I'm already in love. It's uh, it's definitely like a time. Like I've I've been shirking my democratic duties on health divers for this game, and I, I felt bad. So it's it's don't like, feel bad, bro. Dude, this is this has got me hook, line, and sinker. What what would you say is your the highlight of of your game so far? Like, do you have a favorite mission or a favorite moment that you that you've had so far? <laughs> oh man, okay, okay, okay. I would I would kind of wish Danny was here so he could he could he could give me the feedback on this because it's like this. I, I went up to this to this guy right to this uh to his little these preppers right these doomsday preppers in their shelters so i wanted this guy trying to reconnect everybody into the internet once again and pretty much his story is like he he misses his i think his girlfriend or fiance i think fiance i, I wasn't sure but it turns out she's like somewhere else and um i had to deliver her to him once i delivered her like it was a cutscene where they found where they met up with each other after a long time and they were like oh my god you're here oh my god la 
la la la and something about a fucking hourglass and she's like we don't need that anymore and she he broke she broke it some kind of heirloom i don't fucking know who cares was it something that you just gave her like you went out no. of your way fucking two thousand miles oh I, you know what you know, no, you know you know you know what yes all right that was the fucking first mission <laughs> I had to fucking do with her. <laughs> so she just fucking broke that shit. And she's like, let's do this together with the fucking guy. They were walking in to do the sex, you know. Uh, the girl turned around and she, she gave me two thumbs up. And it registered because, like, the whole game is set on likes. All that shit, you know. And likes are just, like, a point-based system. So she gave you two two likes with her, thumb, with her thumbs, right? As they were walking away. And I think, if I remember correctly, the guy picked her up, right? And he was going to take her in. <laughs> And then it just, it zooms out to, like, Sam just, like, looking at both of them. And then he gives his own thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good, man. I fucking, I think that. So, basically, basically, it was, like, 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 I'm about to, like, pick her up, walk her into this room, and basically manhandle her. And he's just, like. Nice. He, it's just showing. It's just yeah. It's just him showing his face, giving him a thumbs up. And be like, nice. Exactly. Just the fucking me. But no, that wasn't even the fucking end part. Turns out they got. They were. I guess they were married or they're getting married, right? Uh, everybody you deliver to, like they could send you mail and you read that, and it's usually like thank yous or they give you tips and shit and like or some kind of lore. <laughs> <laughs> I got one from the guy, and he's like, man, this marriage thing is a lot harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you're doing better out there than I am in here. And then I got another one from from the from the woman, and she's like, "Yeah, so it's not working out. I ended up moving back." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh my god, guys! I went through BT territory for these people. I, I fucking went through some bullshit just to get this hourglass, just to have her smash in front of me. And here I thought they had a happy ending, but no, the guy the guy was like, oh, I don't know, man. I just I, I miss being free." The guy was a total piece of shit, and the girl was like, "Yeah, he's a he's a piece of shit." <laughs> I should have never let him came in me. That that was the ending there. Yeah, it's uh... a. <laughs> yeah. At least you got your two thumbs up though. Yeah, that that was that was a cool moment. It, it all it kind of went back when I got the mail. I'm like, "Oh, guys, come on, man." Yeah, th- there's a lot of good moments Honestly, in this game. It's so it's so good, man. It's a it's a it's the small things. That's fucking great, honestly. I'm in love with that, honestly. That's like the kind of kooky shit that I live for in those kind of missions. And it also helps that that Sam, like, big time saw the snake vibes. Like, he has the low voice and everything. And sometimes he has that fucking stupid ass uh, snake quirk where he just has to repeat the last thing in a sentence as a question. Chiral network. Is he going to be all right? Shadow Moses. I'm like, all right, Sam. Like I, I, he doesn't do it enough. He doesn't do it a lot, which is which is fine. But like, it's that quirk of, of not even solid snake, just all the fucking snakes. God damn it, man! Like I get the technology wasn't as good as it was, so the probably the calls aren't coming in as clear. But god damn it, man! Like you know exactly what they said. You don't need to be like terrorists. A high D. I like I I I don't want to hear them explain more, man. Just like you, I, you got your mission, homie. Just let's go. But that's that's Snake. Uh, this is this is Sam, and Sam is a different breed. In the beginning of the game, he's like, "I'm just trying to get the shit delivered. Don't talk to me." But it's a little bit, little by little, he's he's softening up. It's it's a good story, man. Like if you're gonna play it, just it it's it's gonna be a good time. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna play it. I don't know if it's gonna be the next thing on my list immediately. I have been playing um, Rise of the Ronin game. Uh, I bought Rise of the Ronin and Dragon's Dogma at the same time. But I haven't touched Dragon's Dogma. I've basically just been playing this Ronin game. And I'm not going to lie to you, it's it's really great. Uh, a lot more descriptive than great, of course, is uh, it's it's really huge. I spent a lot of time in this game. I've put in 78 hours into the game Ooh. so far. And I only just completed Chapter 1 yesterday. The game is, is very, very open uh, you have like the opportunity to do a lot uh, pretty early on in the game. They, they just kind of let the reins loose on you, you know. Like you can do a lot. I don't know if you ever played Neo. Did you ever? Did you ever play it? Did you ever try it out? Yeah, cu- uh, there are a couple missions here and there. So basically, the game plays like Neo. There are no demons this time around, so you're just fighting other like bandits and 
samurai and like all this other stuff. I think that uh, it's really cool. Like I said, you you pretty much early on you you just get to do whatever you want. You know, um, you get like one or two missions. The co the co op in this game is also a lot different than how it was in Neo. Like Neo, you're familiar with like okay, I'm gonna go do this mission, and then like immediately I just go to a shrine, and then you know I can summon people to help me, right? Mm. Um, in this game, uh, it works pretty much in that same facet, but missions are something that you have to like accept, right? So instead of because Neo, there there wasn't an overworld. There was just like a map and missions to choose from on the map. So in this case, there's an overworld, right? There are people to talk to and things to do. And so you going into a mission, you know, you could tell because you'll be asked to like talk to somebody. And they'll ask you if you're ready. And then all of a sudden it'll cut to black and then the mission screen will pop up. And then it'll ask you if you want to, you know, have people join you online or whatever. That's what I was wondering. I'm like, I, I this looks like a game that, you can join with other people, but I, I wasn't sure because I, I was watching Charlie play and he, uh, he, I don't know if he was doing solos. No, I think he was going solo because every time his character died, he would switch to a different character. Yeah. So in this game, uh, yeah. you'll have uh, like allies in your mission and it lets you uh, like play between the three, three different people in your mission. The only difference is if you're playing online, like those other people are actually being controlled by two other people. So in this case, you don't you don't get to control the other people, um, but mm -hmm. they can revive you before you die out or before you guys lose all of your lives. It's kind of cool in that sense. I think the majority of the the time that I put into is just doing all of the side objectives, things like uh, going around collecting all the collectibles, uh, you know, doing all of like the interactive activities with like uh, they have shrines that you can pray to cats that you can find and pet. Uh, they have like a little event that you can do with like uh, taking pictures. So like you'll go to like certain places on the, in, in the map and just like take pictures of like uh, buildings, like shrines and stuff like that. I've been, I've been really in love with this game. I can, I can definitely see myself preferring this over dragon's dogma, just from how much of it I've played so far. I did see uh, when dragon's dogma came out, uh, I saw that um, Charlie posted a video that the game was unplayable and pretty much without knowing anything i like got kind of worried <laughs> yeah <laughs> against my better judgment i was like okay i don't know what he said i don't know what was said i'm not gonna look at this video i'm not gonna worry about it literally five minutes later i'm already playing the video and i'm like i gotta know what he said i gotta know what's going on dude <laughs> he got you <laughs> yeah he got me it, it wasn't really anything bad though at least it didn't pertain to me because I, I bought it on console, but basically the game is unplayable, but just on, on PC. Like, the PC port is just not good. Oof. I, I, it's probably difficult to translate it to a... I don't know. I don't know. Like, were they, they were working on both, right? Like, both PC port and then the, the console version, the PC version, right? Like, those came out at the same time. There's not, like, delay in one or the other. They usually come out at the same time, right? Yeah, I think it was a multi-release at the same time. Because it's out for Xbox, too. Yeah, I think the game is for all. Yeah, yeah, the game is for every system. If it's literally unplayable on PC, then it, I, of course there's gonna be time. But it's like it's it was it's been hyped, right? By the Ronin, so it's like I don't know I don't know how long it's been in development for, but it, it feels like the server should have been like a little bit more prepared for for the influx of people playing for uh, Rise of Ronin. Yeah, at least for the PC, you know, um, if it works on consoles, like it, it's kind of unfair for the PC gamers i'm standing up for the pc master race i'm doing it fuck you a dra dragon's dogma is the one that's unplayable i don't know about, uh, about i'm sorry yeah yeah you know even more for dragon's dogma since like it, that shit was like we were everybody was waiting for for it the fact that like it, it's what it's crashing a lot or like it's just yeah it's like it's like barely even works like i think basically from from what i saw in the video the video was like about 20 minutes and in the first five minutes, he basically summarizes, hey, you're basically about to watch me, like, try to have as many attempts as possible to make this game run and work on my computer. He's like, I've tried configuring. I've tried redoing drivers. He's like, anything that you can think of, like, he tried. Uninstalling oh, it, reinstalling it, redo drivers, update drivers, fucking running in low res, running in ray trace, with ray trace off. Just, it was pretty bad. Yeah, so, so far, I've been, um, I've been playing this game probably too much. Like this is pretty much the only game that I play on my on my time when I'm just, just messing around or whatever. I definitely think one of the biggest challenges in this game is uh parrying. Of course, like just most games like Dark Souls or Neo and stuff like that. 
because all of the enemies are human enemies. Usually when you when you fight monsters and stuff like that, you know, in Dark Souls and Neo, like it's it's a really like easy to tell when they're going to swing for you to time your movements and stuff like that. This game fucking gets to me sometimes cuz I'll be fighting somebody and I feel like I have my movements down, like my my timing for when they're striking and stuff like that. And then they decide to throw a wrench and everything. And some of these bosses, like halfway, like let's say you get them to like their halfway or a quarter health or something like that. And they'll be like, oh, you want to get serious, huh? And then they'll just drop their weapon and then pick up a different weapon. And then immediately like a whole new sense of timing oh and everything like that has to be implemented. I'm oh over here with God. like one last health pill left to my fucking name. And I'm like, oh, dude, come on. There's there's a lot of times where I've been like yelling at my screen, super frustrated that I have uh, <laughs> that I happen to have let this go on and stuff. It just irritated me. Yeah, I saw the parry system. Fucking Charlie Critical was doing the no weapon run, punching and kicking and parrying with his own hands. And that's crazy, man. And I saw the um the timing for some of the parries, and it's it's nuts. You gotta like you gotta parry the last hit of their combo in order to do some damage, which is like kind of unheard of. Because everybody has a fucking combo and like you the punishment is crazy if you if you get the if you get the parry wrong. At least from what I saw. Like this you gotta get your parries down. I'm sorry, Danny, but you got if you're gonna play, dude, you gotta Dude, you, you gotta, gotta master the parry. You dude. gotta get them parries down, bro. One of the awesome things about this is um they have like a dojo area. Almost all of the enemies, almost all the bosses that you'll fight, you can actually like practice sparring with oh, them. That's awesome. Yeah, so you can you can get your timings down and stuff like that. I've had to do that for a couple of different different people. It, it makes a difference for sure. I have a small gripe. Well, not really a gripe. I guess more like an observation on like manga sites relating to the ads. I know I'm I'm gonna get so, probably something like oh it's probably because what you look at, bitch. I know I look at hentai. Like I'm trying to read some manga. That's nothing new, you know. What do you think you are? I'm I'm reading manga and then I see titties and bam and I'm like God damn it dude I'm just trying to see what Luffy and the gang are up to I don't want to see no nipples or some shit like that you know but there was one which was really fucking cool that I saw some of these people who buy ad space like sure there's a lot of like a scammy spam porno shit uh or just some like new quote unquote like. A MOBA type game where it's probably just the same scam, a lot of anime kind of stuff. There's mm-hmm. sometimes it's like animations. Uh, me and Danny both, uh, both I think saw the same one, where at, where it was like some animated movie, um, but it was the whole fucking movie and it was like ten minutes long, dude. Like the whole thing was in an ad, and like there was no sound, but like I don't think there was subtitles either. But I was just like, how how long does this ad go? It goes for ten like. 10 fucking minutes dude like it, it goes on for a while and we're I, me and danny were both like what is this thing dude it's like <laughs> it was it wasn't hentai it wasn't anything anime it was just like an animated cg film but i think for like kids or something but it, it was like just the weirdest shit to read when you to to watch when you're trying to read like one punch man or something there was this really cool one i saw where uh i don't think they animated this part yet uh you correct me if i'm wrong but the fight with in one punch man the fight versus the homeless king you remember that guy yeah the dude with the crown who shots who shot orbs of light i want to say i remember what was that that was like after garu i think it was during oh like he was part of the bad guys association yeah well, what's the next season gonna be uh for the anime is it gonna be the garu fights i i think what comes after that was uh like when he moves to uh, a city where does season two of the anime end off? I, I have no idea. I don't. I don't think they made it to this part, but they animated a, a, a not so much a fight scene. It was the homeless king versus king. <laughs> so like you know, there was no fighting. It was just a lot of like it was animated. Actually, pretty fucking good. Pretty well, man. Like the art style reminded me a little bit of Mob Psycho, which is totally fine, you know, because it's it's the same person, but it's like. Mm-hmm. It's it's showing when the homeless king was about to do the fucking uh, the spirit bomb attack on King, and King is like, "Hold on, look at your feet," and then like the guy was like, "Oh shit," and there was nothing happening, and the king is like, "The ground there is looks really really unstable. If you launch that, I'd be careful. You might fall." 
and the guy just starts freaking out like he having a psychotic attack he's like wait why did he tell me that did i already lose what the fuck no i can't i have to get away before he launches it and like it's dude it's it's fucking great like it's just that fight and it, it's whoever made that like whoever animated that i'm sorry like if that's your only mode of putting your work out there but i just want you to know that it's appreciated man who or woman whoever whoever it was i see you just know that because that that was a work of that was a work of art like i know it's pure genius it, it was it was great it was well animated the scenes where they seem to be more intense than than the uh like your your average uh scene is is like it is it's well it's well placed and it's well animated too so it's it's just kudos to the to the ads sometimes it's porno sometimes it's actual good shit it, it was a good time like spent just like i'm reading komi-san and then all of a sudden i see like king and the homeless man homeless king and i'm like wait a minute it, a homeless emperor i think is his name i don't remember but he's like i'm 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 watching this thinking like this can't be the whole fight and it re- and it fucking was i'm like man this is mm. this is good <laughs> this is good oh man it's like they should just they should just like start uh uh streaming uh twitch ads like tw- not twitch ads but like twitch <sighs> streams you know like just play a quick ad and be like all right here's back to this twitch stream sometimes when i'm on like the effects for life websites oh like yeah dark souls and stuff like that they'll do that like here's a build video on youtube or whatever just watch this ad really quick and they don't stop either. They'll just kind of cycle into other games. So like it'll it'll turn into like a fucking like Dead Space speedrun or something like that. And I'm like, okay, not the right game here. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel you on these fucking ads though. You know they 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 be doing the most honestly. It's all it's all just about like whatever your phone is listening to you say. You know. Definitely, yeah, for sure. Which is why I said like you know, we all know fucking hentai is is pretty popular here <clears throat> in our group. I read it for the plot, okay? Go fuck yourself. I think the replay in this game is also going to be pretty good. I think there's definitely a lot of room in here for everyone to get into, like, even at the late stages. So, like, once the DLCs and things come out, I'm sure people will still be, like, just barely oh, picking up good to hear. and getting into it. You know? Because, like I said, it's it's not really, like... I feel like they fix a lot of issues for these type of for these types of games, like Dark Souls and, and Neo, where, obviously, it's very it's very singular right like you're going in a very narrow path like there's really only one one direction to go in and since elden ring came out you know they they really kind of adapted to like how open world can also utilize these kind of games and kind of put you in a position where you can just replay it over and over again doing different things different in different ways you know what i mean this game is slightly tweaked so there's no real like there's no real true new game plus from what I've read. Not really to spoil things, but like this this game gives you an opportunity to replay previous missions. For these missions, you know, you're giving choices to make, people to kill, people not to kill, you know, who to trust, who not to trust. So mm, yeah. I think the replayability in here is isn't really again organically going through the game again and doing all of these things. And I think that the reason why they do it like that is because the game is long. Like, it's long, dude. I'm telling you. I'm 80 hours into this game, and I just barely beat Chapter 1. I don't know how many chapters there are, but it's pretty long. It's It's been it's been some work that I put into this game. I would definitely say that um, as I get more into it, I'll have more details on that. But um, I don't know. Yeah, so far, like I said, everything's been looking up for me when I'm, when I'm playing this game. Rise of the Ronin so far has my recommendation. All right, guys. So thank you for tuning in to the podcast for this week. Y'all have a good one. If you have any questions, of course, uh, Unverse Podcast at uh, was it Gmail? Just yes. kidding. Unverse Podcast ah, at Gmail.com. You got me. We'll see you next time. <laughs>